Hello, my name is Ron Canarella. I'm a forester with the Department of Land and Natural Resources, and this is an introduction to Hawaii's, to Hawaii's statewide assessment of forest resources and statewide forest resource strategy process, otherwise given the name SWARS to make it easier to pronounce. Here's my name. I'm Ronald Canarella. Call me Ron. I'm a forester with Department of Land and Natural Resources, Division of Forestry and Wildlife, Administrative Headquarters in Honolulu, Hawaii. My email there, Ronald J. Canarella at Hawaii.gov, and my phone, 587-4189. Uh, that phone number, by the way, forwards to my cell phone, so you can pretty much get me any time between 7 in the morning and, uh, and 9 at night. Bear in mind, we're two hours behind California, five hours behind New York, uh, but if it rings and I can answer it, I pretty much take the call whenever I can. And uh, there's our website for, our, for the Hawaii State Assessment, uh, is hawaiistateassessment.info and I'll be going to that into more detail. What is SWARS? Well, SWARS is an acronym. That means every letter stands for something else. SWARS is a new requirement of the 2008 Farm Bill, which was one of the largest pieces of legislation passed last year. And that new requirement of the Farm Bill requires that every state must complete a statewide assessment of forest conditions and statewide resource strategy to the Secretary of Agriculture in order to qualify for many Farm Bill programs, both uh, par Farm Bill programs that are programs of the Forest Service, programs that are part of the Natural Resource Conservation Service, as well as several programs that are outside of both of those agencies but are directly under the USDA. There's a new one, for example, uh, the Emergency Forest Restoration Bill or Act or program. And uh, so these uh, many programs, a dozen or so, will be looking at the statewide assessment and resource strategies when they evaluate our grant applications and when they evaluate how they're going to allocate funding uh, across the nation. So the SWARS, for the sake of this discussion from our this point, uh, it consists of two distinct documents. The first document is a statewide assessment of forest conditions. That's the statewide assessment, SWA. And the second document is a statewide resource strategy, the ERS, put them together, you get SWARS. So I commonly refer to them as the assessment and the strategy as uh, for shorthand. These uh, documents assess forest conditions and trends on all land ownerships statewide. This is very important. All land ownerships, not just forested lands, but all land ownerships statewide. Uh, but the focus is on private forested lands and urban lands. You, know, you take away private forested lands and, and urban lands in Hawaii and you're left with agricultural lands, uh, wild lands, and lava, beaches, and reef, if you will. So in Hawaii it makes only makes sense to look at all lands regardless of what's on them and how they're being used and regardless of who owns them. So this will be a ridge top to reef assessment across all land ownerships and land types. Written into the Farm Bill is the deadline for submission of this document. The deadline is two years from the, from the enactment of the bill, which is June 18, 2008. So therefore, the deadline for submission of these two documents became June 18, 2010. So at that, by that time, every state forester must submit their state's completed SWARS to the Secretary of Agriculture. I repeat, this deadline is hardwired into the Farm Bill and is literally an act of Congress. Uh, often deadlines for projects of this of this type are written by agencies and they're written as uh, as agency rules or they're they're written as part of the grant condition and and uh, and if you're late meeting those deadlines you can often just write a letter and ask for an extension. This is not not the case. This uh, farm bill was passed by Congress, uh, vetoed by President Bush and Congress then overrode President Bush's veto. So uh, they really want this farm bill. Uh, it was very clear that they really wanted this farm bill to happen. And uh, therefore, they really meant this deadline. So um, there's no, that's written in stone. And um, it should also be noted that farm bills are a pretty big deal. And so they have a life time of generally 70 years or so before they go major, undergo major revisions. So these statewide assessments may have long-term ramifications. And I would venture to say that uh, they're going to like this this comprehensive landscape planning approach. And I expect that uh, from here on out, uh, we will be we'll be redoing these statewide assessments into perpetuity. Every state forestry agency is responsible 
uh, for producing their their state's resource. And the state forester, my boss, Paul Connery, is the person who's required to pr submit his his soirs. Uh, I've been tasked with the uh, project, uh, with the task of, of heading up this project. Legally, according to the Farm Bill, we must uh, every state must consult with three of their state committees. And those three committees are the Forest Stewardship Committee, the Forest Legacy Committee, and the State Technical Advisory Committee. The first two committees, Stewardship and Legacy, are, Do are DOFA, Division of Forestry and Wildlife Committees. In fact, in Hawaii, they're one and the same. And the STAC, the State Technical Advisory Committee, is an NRCS committee that uh, has just sort of just been re revitalized under a new set of um, federal regulations. And so, this, so uh, there are more detailed instructions on what we are required to do, who are required to cooperate with. Um, from the uh, in the farm bill itself, there are detailed instructions from the Forest Service, and some regions are providing their own guidelines. Uh, Northeast region approach is very different. Um, the Pacific Islands uh, may be issuing um, some regional guidelines for the Pacific Islands as well. This is lifted right from the Forest Service guidelines. At a minimum, the state forest resource assessments will provide an analysis note of present and future forest conditions, trends, and threats on all ownerships in the state using publicly available information, federal, state, private, military, national park, Hawaiian homelands, beaches, urban areas, analysis of present and future forest conditions, trends, and threats on all of their, those ownerships. It is to identify forest-related threats, benefits, and services consistent with state and private forest redesign national themes. So there's a whole other world, parallel universe, that's happening at the national level. They've got national themes, and they want to see how our state uh, issues uh, uh, address national priorities. They will delineate priority rural and urban landscapes to be addressed in the resource strategy. And when they say delineate, they mean map. They want to see specifically maps of where our pri priority areas are. We're required to work with neighboring states and governments. In that case, in the case of Hawaii, that means working with our, our Pacific Island territory partners and the freely associated states, where we work with them quite a bit already. Uh, and we are required to incorporate existing wildlife plans, including the Wildlife Action Plans, otherwise known as the CWCS, Community Wildfire Protection Plans, um, and, and, and in our case, uh, the Coral Reef Protection Plans. Um, and we can also utilize relevant national and regional assessments as appropriate. So this is just an example of one of the types of input maps that will go into the uh, Hawaii SWARS. This map came from a, a project that we just completed called the Spatial Analysis Project, which we didn't know it at the time, but the Spatial Analysis Project was uh, a prototype, or be, in hindsight, was a prototype for the, the for the SWARS. Uh, the statewide uh, the spatial analysis project was a project of the Forest Stewardship Program, just one program. Forest Stewardship uh, supports um, good forestry practices on private lands. It's a Forest Service program, and they wanted to uh, have a an, a sense of how many. Uh, what kinds of benefits the Forest Stewardship Plan had produced over its last 20 or 30 years and many billions of dollars of uh, assistance dollars. So every state was required to, to do the project that you're looking at and produce these, these layers. So this is just one data layer that will go into our assessment, which are the forested lands. This layer was derived from a project called GAP. And GAP provided us with uh, those forested lands that, had, that are 100% native, or mostly native, uh, mixed native and alien, which you can't see, there's a little bit of yellow in there, but not much, or completely non-native or alien-dominated forest. This is another one of the layers that went into that uh, spatial analysis project. Uh, that, that project, I believe, we utilized 15 different maps or layers like this. This map shows areas that are designated critical habitat. Uh, critical habitat is, is designated by the Fish and Wildlife Service uh, and is habitat that's identified as being critical to the recovery of threatened and endangered species. So uh, you can see that a very large number of acres in Hawaii are de designated, federally designated critical habitat. Um, for those of you who don't live here, um, you might be surprised to know that Hawaii is often referred to as the extinction capital of the world because so many of our native species are 
extinct or are threatened with extinction. And uh, by designating them as federally listed threatened and endangered species and then identifying the habitat required, uh, it is hoped that we'll be able to save those species and uh, get them fully or get them fully recovered. So this is another data layer that went into that 15 layer analysis which you think of these layers as kind of transparent overlays and you add them all together and you uh, add different values for the different layers. If it has forest it gets points, if it has weeds it might lose points and what you end up with are it, is it will be a map that will look something like this. This map was produced showing the dark green areas show high and the lighter green areas show low um, applicability if you will for one program, for the Forest Stewardship Program. So the statewide assessment we can think of as doing this type of project ten times. We can do one of these for fire threats, we can do one of these for priority watershed areas, we can do one of these for uh, protecting birds, we can do one of these for urban and community forestry, one of these for um, high, medium, and low watersheds to address for preserving um, coastal water quality. Uh, we can do one of these, we can do sets of maps of these for environmental education, uh, high priority areas for urban forestry, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can see that the SWARS is, uh, is highly spatial. They really want to see the stuff mapped across the landscape, high, medium, and low. What are the resources required to produce these documents? Uh, well, funding support for the for SWARS is uh, is in flux. It's not quite clear. At the time the Farm Bill was written, um, it was written into the bill that the states would be provided m a substantial re funding resources to produce their documents. That has not yet happened because of the financial crisis the federal government is experiencing as well as the states. And so um, the funding support for SWARS is not clear. We're, we're working with the Forest Service and with the NASF now and they're trying to get some monies, some grant monies to us, but uh, I'd like to point out that we are now almost halfway through that two-year window to produce our SWARS and so far um, we haven't received any funding support from the Forest Service and in fact I've experienced budget cuts of my own staff so we have less res resources now than I thought we would have to, uh, to get us this far. Nevertheless, we will forge ahead. Uh, the, the emphasis is very much on the use of geographic information systems data, statewide computer data. Uh, they are prefer national to use national data sets. Unfortunately, many national data sets do not include Hawaii. Um, so in those cases, we are required or allowed to use local data sets. And we have very rich local GIS data. Uh, we're very fortunate for that. And we're also required to participate and interact with the public and our partners uh, in a meaningful way for the production of these documents. So, specifically in Hawaii, we will utilize existing GIS data for the most part. We might have to beef that up a little bit on the urban forestry side, but for the most part existing statewide data sets and to national data sets that we have access to. We will have to utilize existing staff both within the Division of Forestry and Wildlife and within our partners. Um, hopefully they'll be able to just provide person hours to this to this to working with us. Uh, we will have to very meaningfully engage our partners and see where we can where, where our interests overlap and uh, gain efficiency um, kind of get two for ones, if you will, as we work on this thing. The Hawaii process will be open and transparent from the beginning. Our website will be open. Anybody can register and comment and, um, and uh, try to engage the public and our partners as much as possible from the very beginning so that people have a, a stake and understand where this is coming from. It's very important that uh, in this age of declining budgets but extraordinary new technologies that I'm going to be relying heavily on things like email, using uh, the web, video conferencing, podcasting, public access television, um, Twitter, who knows, but uh, we'll utilize new technologies to reduce travel, carbon, offsets, mailing paper, printing a lot of paper. I'm going to try to avoid a lot of that, using up a lot of resources to produce this. We'll save money, save resources, and uh, we'll all get better at utilizing these uh, technologies. And to do this, uh, again, I'd like to mention uh, hawaiistateassessment.info as a 24-hour 
public meeting square that is free, open to the public, where you can find more information than you could possibly want, videos, uh, articles, uh, have say your piece, you can subscribe to it and get emails uh, on a regular basis if you like, or you can just drop by and see what's happening at your leisure. The timeline. The official kickoff for this for the Hawaii Suarez was at a meeting that we had on Monday, February 23rd at 10.30 in the morning at the State Video Conference Centers. And that meeting consisted of the State Technical Advisory Committee, the Forest Stewardship Committee, the Forest Legacy Committee, as well as members of the public and interested cooperators. Uh, today is Friday of the same week, to the 27th. Yes, February 27th, right now it's about 9 o'clock in the morning. And uh, at that meeting we established a local working group, which is an official creature of the uh, State Advisory Committee. So the local working group hasn't done anything yet, but, uh, but we will. We'll be coordinating with our local working group. I'd like to see a local working group on every island. Uh, this is the point where really the rubber meets the road. We're at a point where we're really going to produce this thing uh, 24 24-7, pedal to the metal, if you will. I'd like to create and present the draft statewide assessment at this year's 2009 Hawaii Conservation Conference, which is uh, July 28th, 29th, and 30th at the Hawaii Convention Center here in Honolulu. The, convent, the Hawaii Conservation Conference is held every year, and it's grown to, to be about 1,500 people. And the, st the structure is uh, generally a series of, of symposiums, two to three hour symposiums, four or five speakers each on different topics. And they have simultaneous uh, is symposia going on. So this year we've gotten one of those where we'll actually present our completed, or hopefully mostly completed, state assessment. Uh, we'll produce the sort of sections of it and get feedback from um, conference attendees and the public on that. The next day, I've got a reserved time for a workshop where we'll begin to tackle in earnest the second part of this of this star Suarez project, which will be the strategy. And I'm, I don't want to I don't want to begin work on the strategy much sooner than May of 2009. I don't want to get out in front of anybody on the strategy. I'd like everybody who wants to get in on the brainstorming part of the strategy before the, before we go too down, far down the road um, is welcome to join in both of these processes. So the second day of the workshop after people have heard the assessment uh, will brainstorm on the strategy and by that point uh, I think federal resources will arrive. I think we'll have um, probably some more dedicated staff on this, hopefully groups of students and volunteers and, uh, and the class assignments and, and what have you. We'll have more, more, more bodies, more eyes, more fingers typing away, more people mapping at that point, and really kick, uh, kick the strategy into high gear. The following year, uh, March 2010, uh, we will, would like to com submit our basically completed assessment and the first draft of our strategy to the Board of Land and Natural Resources. That's the DLNR Board of Land and Natural Resources. Part of that process uh, entails submitting the document through the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. So OHA gets these documents before they reach the Board of Land and Natural Resources. This is not required in the uh, federal legislation, but, uh, but is a policy of the state forester to pass it through the Board of Land and Natural Resources. And I think that's just a terrific idea. So um, we'll look for that in March 2010. And uh, that gives us several months to address any issues and concerns that raised during that process. I'd like to get it to the Secretary of Agriculture by July 1, 2010. I'd like to su su submit this one in a little early just to make sure it arrives on time. The consequences of uh, getting this uh, document in late or not getting it in or having it be half-baked, I. Are, are unacceptable because the consequences of the farm bill, we cannot afford to not be eligible for these farm bill dollars. They're, we're talking about billions of dollars of farm bill money that uh, will be made available to Hawaii, potentially to Hawaii, uh, once the Secretary has accepted our statewide assessment. So, um, so as an end, funding technical assistance uh, is in the pipeline from the Forest Service and the National Association of State Foresters. I'll, we, don't, we don't know until the check has been cashed and deposited in the account. Um, and uh, this is a rapidly changing fiscal situation. Day-to-day, uh, -day we don't know what our budgets are, what our staffing is. Um, we have a new administration with new priorities. 
Um, so, so while they're figuring out what they're doing up there in Washington and at the, in the state legislature, that deadline is not moving. So we do not have time to wait. So with no money, uh, lots of aloha and um, all the resources we have at our disposal, we are moving ahead. That deadline, June 18th, 2010, is written in stone. The big picture, the SWARS is also taking place at the national level and at all state levels. They're, they're doing one of these nationwide and every state is doing one of these. And it, this is a tremendous opportunity in my lifetime as a forester. I've been a professional forester for 29 years. And uh, this, this is the kind of the culmination of land use planning in, in, for our lifetimes. This is where uh, GIS and remote sensing and web technologies and, and uh, public access television and, and really uh, uh, supercomputing and microcomputing and handheld computing all combine so that we can, for the first time in history, really do comprehensive across the landscape planning. And so this is an extraordinary opportunity for us to look at our lands and look at what we want to do with them. The SWARs can be tailored to the state's needs. Obviously, in Hawaii, we will be taking a Nahupua'a focus for our SWARs. Um, what happens at the reef, at the ridge top, affects the reef. What happens at the reef affects what uh, what uh, animals get back up onto the land. So our SWARs will obviously look very different from North Dakota's SWARs. They don't have many coral reefs. I don't think they have an ahupua'a focus in their state and uh, they don't have a whole bunch of tourists at their shorelines like we do and military bases everywhere so ours will be unique again all land ownerships and we'll look at all land uses this is an extraordinary opportunity and responsibility for us to also complement existing initiatives that have been developed in response to the current economic crisis or situation we find ourselves in. DLNR, I'm quite proud of uh, the DLNR Recreational Renaissance Initiative conceived and really championed by our DLNR chair, Laura Thielen. I think there's a lot of over, uh, potential for interaction between that process and this. Uh, there's the federal stimulus package, which is providing monies to the states and to private sector for infrastructure. Our forests uh, are certainly an important part of the infrastructure for our, our island lives here. Without forests, we wouldn't have the water that we have. Um, this is our, also an opportunity for us to demonstrate our creativity, our leadership, and our unique values from the state of Hawaii. Uh, the, this en enlightened multicultural society produced our current president. And um, this is an opportunity for us to um, kind of make uh, make our president and our congressional delegation proud by producing a forward-thinking comprehensive document from their home state of Hawaii uh, and it's also a, an opportunity to integrate land use uh, environmental education wildlife management hunting as well as endangered species and native wildlife uh, watershed protection um, wildfire uh, pre-suppression, coral reef protection, look at uh, the interplay between agriculture, invasive species, tourism, and economic development. All of these will be addressed in the statewide assessment. And in the bigger picture, why does this document really matter? Well, there's two audiences. First is us, those of us who live here. I believe that it's, it's crucial for us to be open and honest with ourselves about the condition of our resources because we're going to be we're going to be here for the for the long haul, and uh, it's important that our water, our wildlife, uh, our soils, our the health of our reefs, uh, that we uh, that we have a handle on those. And uh, and if things are going in the wrong direction, we can turn them around. Um, just as importantly, the other audience is the federal government. Congress sets a lot of these program priorities, um, and they will be depending on the state assessments to help guide them in directing resources to where they will where they are most needed the agencies such as the USDA Fish and Wildlife Service other agencies uh, will use these documents to fund programs a new a new part of this 2008 farm bill for example are these uh, several pots of money that are competitive grant funds that means that every state will develop grant proposals, it might be fencing, it might be forest restoration, it might be habitat restoration, it might be watershed restoration, money to fight fire, and you package up your grants every year and you send them 
up to be reviewed and they go head to head against grants from other states and what they do is they pull out every state's assessment and then they look at the, the, the state's grants and they see do the state's grants fit into the state's assessment and uh, do the and do the state's grants uh, fit into the national assessment and they a bunch of people sit down and they actually score these things like a term paper and they give they give the, the grant a score and uh, the whoever gets whichever grants get the highest scores gets the money and if you don't make the cut you don't your grant doesn't get funded and we will be seeing more and more of that as resources get scarce and so I would like to have us produce a highly credible uh, state um, assessment so that we will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Californias and with the Washington states and with the powerful southern pine producing states um, so we must make our case before the nation so what are the next steps? The next steps are to establish local working groups. We did that in name on Monday. We haven't actually done it yet, uh, but within the next two, two or three weeks, we will get our local working groups up and running and uh, get them to commit to produ actually producing products, written products, written maps, get those products out there for review. Uh, in this process, we'll develop uh, agendas, work plans, and timelines for the local working groups. I'll probably do this as a website, sort of project management website. And then for the next four months, it's soirs, 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 nothing but soirs, heading towards that um, uh, Hawaii Conservation Conference date to uh, present our soirs to the public. For more information, please visit hawaiistateassessment.info. There is lots of information there. And we're, the website is getting better and better every day for detailed information, latest news and announcements, and you can choose to be uh, how to be informed and involved. And uh, it, I'd much rather people went to the website than me uh, printing out hundreds of pounds of paper and flying it around or f flying people around t to meetings so that they can uh, so that they can talk. So we'll be as carbon neutral and use as little paper as possible in this process. This is like a screenshot of our website. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you can see the middle section is kind of the news, the weblog part of it. The right side has a countdown timer. <laughs> we have one year, three months, 22 days, 12 hours, and 26 minutes at the time I took this screenshot. You can see various ways of subscribing to the website. And, and on the left is uh, information, meeting announcements, and links to important documents and other sites. And uh, we'll also be providing uh, um, a section on this where we'll be able to vote on polls so the public can weigh in on what they think is important as well as public discussion forums. If you're interested in working on this project please email me, it's probably the best.